got an issue with the Lakers blaming Le LeBron for the rough trade? I do. I actually got an issue with it because LeBron James, think about it. We know he's powerful. We know he's LeBron James. He's the greatest player ever to play the game of basketball, and he wears a Lakers uniform. And they gave him the keys to make some of these moves. I'm certain of that. But they also kept their hand on the wheel when LeBron wanted to change lanes with that same power that they gave him. So you can't blame LeBron, especially, let's talk about what we're talking about, for Russell Westbrook if you're not going to let LeBron at the trade deadline make his move to get Russell Westbrook out of here, as was reported. Now, for all y'all who say that Russell Westbrook was so bad, y'all need to look again. Because y'all kept saying, man, look how he turned the ball over. Do you know that Russell Westbrook have fewer turnovers this year, his fewest since 2013. Y'all leave that man alone. He shot. Look at him shooting. He missed all these shots. He shot better from the field this year than he did last year before he came to the Lakers. So all I see is a lot of blame game and a lot of scapegoating. But LeBron James, in terms of roster construction, we've seen some of the youngsters go out of town mysteriously. Lonzo Ball, D'Angelo Russell, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram. But don't forget, before LeBron James, we still had that same curiosity and those same departures. Remember? Who in the hell signed Timothy Mozgov to that much? Who in the hell signed Lou Aldang before LeBron got here? Messing up the construction of this team. Who in the hell couldn't get a meeting with Kevin Durant as he spurred and shunned the Lakers? Who couldn't get Dwight Howard to sign here? That ain't on LeBron. So to me, this is a situation where you gave him the keys and you let him steer, but then you kept your hand on the wheel. Can't do that if you're the Lakers. So I ain't got an issue with the Lakers blaming LeBron. I do. Uh, LeBron's worthy of the blame. Think about it. We praise LeBron when he goes out there and he balls out, so why can we not blame him now when he constructs this team negatively? Now, the Lakers made the right decision by giving LeBron James the power because what LeBron James has proven is even if he makes the wrong decision, he will make that wrong decision right on the basketball court. Mm. Even if LeBron James doesn't acquire the necessary pieces that you or I think he should, he still ends up in the NBA Finals. Remember, nine finals in 10 years. Only reason he didn't make it was because he got hurt. So he's proven to consistently make wrong decisions right. But this year, he made the wrong decision, and he left it wrong. Couldn't even make it right. That's all on LeBron. A Lakers roster only ends up with the likes of Russell Westbrook, Dwight Howard, Carmelo Anthony, Anthony Davis because of LeBron James. And meanwhile, LeBron James watches Alex Caruso, mm. KCP, mm. guys like Matthews who are now balling somehow, some way, walk mm. out the building. Brandon Ingram, remember a couple years ago, walk out the building and now look at who and what Brandon Ingram is and what he is doing. Mm. So I praise LeBron because he is worthy of our praise when he's worthy of our praise. But at this point in time, he deserves the blame for the struggles. In agreement that there's no question that the clutch agency and LeBron were behind getting Russell Westbrook. Mm -hmm. That they yeah. are the ones that made the Lakers do this or pressured them into doing this. Good. I'm glad we're there. Do I have a problem <laughs> with the Lakers blaming clutch for that? Yes, I do. Because one of the first things that we learn, what do we learn as kids? Just because somebody tells you to do something doesn't mean you should do it. <laughs> That's, that is at the heart of what the Lakers did. Just Silly. because LeBron and the clutch Silly. agency want you to go get Russell Westbrook doesn't mean ultimately that you have to do it. But my biggest issue with this is that we're talking about this now. And Ooh. apparently the Lakers front office is talking about this now. That's water under the bridge. That's done. There's no coming back from that. Who cares who was behind or whether you should have or what Buddy Heald might have been able to do or Durant. Like, none of that matters now. You have a finite period of time with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. What are you going to do going forward? And I would dare say that trying to put the blame on last season on Clutch Agency isn't going to make things any easier moving forward in getting something done. So I, that's my biggest issue, is the fact that this is an issue and that we're talking about it. If the Lakers have any hope of rebounding from last season, it's not trying to figure out who's really at fault or letting everybody know who's really at fault for what happened. It's figuring out how do we move on from here with what we have. Mm, tremendous point right there, Slick, in terms of the Lakers organization and the dysfunction 
And once again, the leaking and the infighting that is occurring up there. You got LeBron James for how many more years of this level of greatness? You better make that man happy at the same time. Build surrounding pieces that he can use properly as resources. Till they come to that agreement together, we won't see it materialize probably on the court. <laughs>